Now we will look at a very short video also. It's about imaging in unipolar depression. And why is this short? Because we can do different imaging, but unfortunately we cannot diagnose depression with doing CT or MRI. We can do computer tomography and magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging. This is this CT and MRI. But as we said, this will not diagnose depression. And why? Depression is a chemical. It's a receptor disease. It's, a, it's not a huge difference, difference in the brain structure itself. It can be, but usually depression is not caused by a huge difference in brain structure. Because then we will call it organic brain damage that is calling causing depression. That means that it's not related to the psyche itself. It's related to, to some trauma, for example. The patient got an accident. He got the structure change in the brain, and therefore he got a depression. But that's something else. That's not really the most, most important, most common type of depression. Of course, you can get depression by having a structure change, but that that is not what we are dealing with, with here today. Here we are dealing with depression without any trauma and without any uh, disease itself. And then I'm saying that it's not possible to diagnose depression with CT or MRI. So here up there you can see CT, CT device and down there uh, magnet MRI. The difference here is that down there we have a magnetic field that is making these pictures. And up there we have a radiation type of field, the CT that is radiating. And it's actually, one can say that the CT here will be a little bit quicker type. MRI will be a little bit longer. It takes more time. CT can take, I don't know, five minutes, MRI 20 minutes. So the, the difference here, here is time. The other thing is the magnetic field and uh, radiation type. And the uh, uh, third thing I would say is that the tube here that we see in a CT is uh, narrower. In magnetic field, it's much, much wider. So you are actually in, in a tube there in MRI. And in CT, you're actually just taking a very, very narrow slice here uh, of your brain, one can say. In the MRI, it's much, much, much uh, wider. And in that way, you can differentiate between these two devices. The MRI also makes a lot of, a lot of sound. So it comes out a lot of sound from this device. So these are the things I would say uh, to differentiate between them. And of course, the last thing, price. MRI is much, much uh, expensive, more expensive than the CT device. So first of all, we always try to do a CT scan. Why? Because with the CT scan, we can usually uh, rule out organic damage, meaning some structural change in brain. And it can be, as we said, trauma, but it can also be tumors. Maybe the patient have a tumor in the brain, or maybe the, the brain substance is getting less and less because the patient is very old, he is demented, the structure gets, uh, gets uh, less and less. The, we, this is called atrophy. So one can say that when, when, we, when we do a CT scan or MRI of a depressed patient, we want to exclude damages of the brain, other diseases. And we perform it in four cases. There are probably more cases, but I would say I would perform it when I see focal neurological signs. That meaning the patient comes in with any type of symptoms. And focal means that we have a brain that is connected with wires. These are the nerves to your parts of your uh, body. For example, nerves going until my finger. So from, your, from my brain until my finger. And I, when I say focal neurological sign, I'm telling that this pathway from here to there, I have a change here, a damage here in one part of my brain. And maybe I cannot lift up my finger anymore. And that's very focal. I can lift up my third, fourth, fifth finger, but maybe I cannot lift up my second and second finger and my thumb. Then it's a focal damage because in my right hand, I have no problems. In my left hand, I have a problem with the second and first finger. And therefore, I'm telling that this is focal neurological signs. And whenever you see that, or the, the patient's mouth is hanging like this, or strange, strange things in his face. This is very typical focal signs. Then you need to do a CT and MRI scan. 
or when we have persistent cognitive impairment, meaning the patient is persistently dumber, one can say. Memory is bad, concentrating ability is bad, and this is just, this just happens like this, and then it's persistent for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and we don't know what is the cause, what happened with this guy, and maybe this, this person is only 40 years of age. Because otherwise, in all the people, that would be a normal, unfortunately, a normal destruction of the brain. Meaning with, with age, with time, you get dementia. But in, in, a, in a young guy who has persistent cognitive impairment, I would directly do a CT scan, or first of all, because it's cheaper, as we said, and then an MRI scan. All the depressed patients, when we have, we, we, we know that usually... Uh, we have depression in younger people. When I see a depression in an old person, then I need to find out if, is, if, if there's any type of tumor or any type of structure in the brain that is damaged. Because, of course, there exists dementia, and dementia can lead to depression. But I want to exclude, in all the people who are depressed, I want to exclude any type of medical case. New onset depression, meaning the patient just got it now. He didn't have it at all before. So he's, let's say, 40 years of age. He didn't have it in his, in his 20s. He didn't have it in his 30s. No problem. And then suddenly he has a depression. Once again, exclude tumors, exclude any type of disease in the brain that is happening now, right at this point, and that is causing depression. So one can say that these four things uh, is important. Neuro, uh, neurological signs, symptoms that are focal, then we have cognitive impairment that is persistent, that is uh, prolonged time in older people who are depressed and in new onset patients. In this case, we will do a CT scan. Quick review. So we had then what type of neuroimaging can we do to exclude organic brain disease? Computer tomography and magnetic resonance tomography. This is CT and MRI MRI more costly, so therefore we start with CT. And if we see something in the CT and we suspect something is there, then we do an MRI because the MRI has a higher resolution. We can find more things with an MRI than we can in CT scan. But as a first screening, CT scan is more than enough. And if you find something in the brain region with a CT scan, then we perform an MRI to really be sure to, uh, to, of what it is if we cannot already tell it by the CT scan itself. And we perform it by four things, focal neurological signs. We perform it by persistent cognitive impairment, by older depressed patients, and by new onset depression in a young, young guy, for example. So that's it. I thank you very much for listening. And hopefully you will understand now why we do a CT and why we do an MRI in patients with depression. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.